All right, well, we were trying to do, to do our breathing. So coming back into the seated position, let's take both hands to the belly. We're going to start from the bottom. So we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. So breathing to the belly and sense. This is where we have so much control over what's normally an autonomic function in our body and our breath. And when we change our breath, we change many of the systems of our body. So breathing to our abdomen helps to create a sense of grounding, a sense of relaxation and peace. Particularly if you're noticing the exhalation and the space, the pause at the bottom of the exhalation. And remember this in certain postures today, it might be beneficial to breathe to your belly. For instance, a child's pose lends itself well to a belly breath. You're relaxing, you're grounding, you're supported by the earth. But then there will be other poses that we do today that are more benefited by more of a structural breath or a deeper, a deeper upper chest breath. So go ahead and take your hands, both hands to the outer ribs, just let your elbows fall down and start to breathe into the circumference of your rib cage. And your abdomen might still move. Don't pre prevent it from moving. But sense that difference in that control that you have over placing your breath in your body. And as you breathe in, notice the expansion, that lightness, that levity. And you can use that to start to lift up, create space and length in your spine. And when we're breathing to our center, I like to call it your, your juicy center here. Notice what moves above and below. So the diaphragm is what divides our abdominal cavity below, where we were just breathing, and the chest cavity above. And just notice from the standpoint of the center space of breath, what's moving below and what's moving above. And we'll feel that a little bit more. Place your right hand back down on your abdomen. Place your left hand right over your heart. And now think of your body almost like an accordion and filling it up on the inhalation as if your sits bones are reaching down into the earth and the crown of the head upward. Fill from the base of your spine all the way up to your throat. So you can think of starting from your lower right hand, filling up to your chest your left hand and then you can empty either way there's different uh, styles of pranayam where some of them you empty from top to bottom and some you empty from bottom to top and what I encourage you to do is find what feels better for you today because more than likely that's what you need they have a little bit different purposes but just feeling the wholeness of your breath sliding through the length of your spine upward from the base of the spine all the way to the throat and then downward and then the next step is just to find our breath ratio so as you found this full breath and you can keep your hands here if they're good tools to feel yourself moving or if you'd rather drop your arms down to your lap with your palms up at this point you can do that too but I want you to count your inhalation and see how long it is How many, how many seconds, or I'll often count ohm one, ohm two, ohm three. How long is that inhale? And do the same with the exhale. How long is the exhale? So again, in our practice, Different parts of the practice will benefit from different breathing techniques. And think of the postures as creating containers for your breath. So in a child's pose, it might be nice if your exhalation is slightly longer than your inhale. See how that feels right now while you're seated. Can you make your exhalation a little bit longer, whatever your count was, than your inhale? But then let's take a moment. We're gonna take our arms out to our sides. 
imagine that our arms are in a warrior two position so we know we reach out but we also plug in we have that external rotation of the upper arms you might even flip your palms up flip your palms up and then plug those upper arm bones in then turn your palms back down so the upper arm bones in are, are in external rotation that lower arm bones internal and plug your arms in so this is going to start to feel like some work after a little bit of time right relax the tops of the shoulders so belly breath and a long longer exhalation is not going to sustain this posture now i want you to take it more into that structural breath breathing into the chest and the lungs and make sure that the inhale is as long as the exhale you might even take a small pause or notice that space at the top of the inhale feel like your arms it's not work but think of your arms floating with that inhale there's a levity to the inhale that will help to hold your arms exhale you can come back to the center of your spine back to the base of the spine So think of your arms floating up. And then when we move in posture, that's exactly what happens. Take your palms up towards the sky. Inhale, let your arms lift. And exhale, let the arms slowly come down. So there's gravity. But we want to try to keep the two parts of the breath equal, whatever your ratio was. So if that first number was a four, and the second number is a four, that's an easy four, four count. But if one number was short, shorter or longer than the other, you're gonna go the shorter count. And just the simple movement of the arms. Inhaling creates space and length. It awakens us. Exhalation is the relaxation portion, the coming down, right? Gravity's gonna help you. And think there's a beginning a middle and end to the movement just as there's a beginning a middle and an end to the breath such a simple movement right if you want to add your head to this as your hands come up you can just slightly take your gaze up towards the sky and then slowly letting the arms fall back down chin might come down towards the chest if you'd like so instead of making it feel like work, think of as you're breathing into your diaphragm and you just like you feel your chest wall and your ribs lift, imagine the arms lifting with your torso. So it's like a floaty feeling, as effortless as possible. And on exhalation, if there's any effort, it's to not just let your arms fall, right? To come back down with grace, with gravity, gravity, graceful gravity drop. Do one more round. Notice you're sustaining yourself through this more of this chest breath, not the belly. Inhale, come up. This time, reach your arms up and hold. So if you want your arms wider, you can. So now with the arms in this position, the container for our inhale is more spacious. You've created space through your side bodies. Breathe into the side bodies, breathe in. Remember what it felt like to have your hands on the sides of your ribs. Can you breathe into that space now? One more breath. And then let your hands come down through your front. We're gonna come into a soft forward fold. So make sure your legs are in a comfortable position. Just let yourself fall forward. Now just to see what it feels like, go back into your belly breath. And you just do a soft abdominal breath. And you might feel a little compression in your abdomen. See if it feels okay to make the exhalation a little bit longer than the inhale, encouraging more relaxation. Slowly as you breathe in, lift yourself back up, reach your arms up, <clears throat> and exhale, hands to the heart. So these are some of the basic tricks to me in a breath center practice, which really make it much more easeful. And we're gonna continue with that today in our practice. So I'm gonna move my block. I'm gonna ask you to come on to all fours. <clears throat> 
just our cat cow to start. That's another really basic posture where we feel ourselves through our breath. Because in yoga, inhalation is back bends. So that's the tail lifting, the belly dropping, the head lifting, your cow pose. Exhalation generally leads us into forward, what we call forward folds or flexion of the spine. So one of the basic breath movements, inhalation is back bending or extension of the spine. Exhalation is forward folds or flexion. So we use not the, not the pose to create the breath, but the breath to create the pose. Remember, there's still a beginning, a middle, and an end to your breath, just like there is with the posture. And what you might find is if you're out of breath at the top of your cow pose, then you need to move a little faster. Same thing if you're out of breath at the bottom of your cat pose, then you need to move a little faster. But if you have lots of breath left, then time your body movement so it's a little bit slower. Encourage that slower motion with that slower breath. And then we're going to add to this. Next time you exhale, draw your navel center up and press your hips back towards your heels, towards a child's pose. And this first one, take and just rest. If you want to cross opposite hand to the elbow, see if you can go back into your belly breath or your arms can be out in front of you. Imagine soothing your low back with your breath. We work through the physical breath, but we also work through the pranic breath. The pranic breath can fill your entire pelvis right now. It can come up the back side of your body, back down the front side of your body. Nice, long, slow, deep, complete exhalations. You can even slightly squeeze the navel center in towards the front of the spine like you're squeezing that last little bit of breath out. You might even feel your pelvic floor muscles, that diamond shape, and contract and recoil into your body like you're squeezing everything out of the pelvis at the bottom of the exhale. But then we're going to go back into moving into back bend, so we're going to start to breathe into the ribs again. So with your shins on the ground, press your shins into the ground. When you're ready on inhalation, you're going to come onto the shins, take your arms up overhead. Well, if you want to turn and face them, yeah, go ahead and face, sorry, then it'll be easier. Face them, reach up. So breathe into the chest and lungs now, right? And then now as you exhale, we're going to take the hands behind us, come down into our child's pose. So if you find when you're coming to the child's pose, your head doesn't comfortably touch the floor, place a block wherever your forehead would land, because I'm going to have you take the arms up behind you. Then press your shins into the floor. Inhale, lift up, come back up again. So let your breath, think of your breath lifting you up on the inhalation, coming up through your spine. Exhale, we're dropping the whole body back down. So we did this with the arms, right? And you can even just let your hands rest on your back as you come down if you'd rather really let go. But you're inhaling up creating that back bend, exhaling and rounding and coming back down. Again, a simple thing we do with the breath, but now you're using your leg muscles to help lift you up. Press your shins, hug your inner thighs. And you also have to use your leg muscles to keep you from just suddenly dropping, right? Let the breath, the levity of the inhalation lifts you and the gravity of the exhalation eases you down to the ground. Next one, take it all the way up and we'll hold for a few breaths. Breaching through, staying on your shins. I'm going to have you drop your left hand and side bend over to the left. So reach the right fingers to tips to the left side. Yeah. So this is another way we move, another movement pattern with the breath. Generally a side bend, not always, but generally it's going to be an exhalation. 
Inhale, lift yourself back up, both arms up overhead. Take a moment. As you exhale, drop the right hand and side bend over to the right. So the inhalation is always going to lift us back to the center. Let's do that a couple times. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, side bend over to the left. Inhale upwards. So you're moving with your breath, right? It's not synchronized swimming. You might not move with the person next to you. That's okay. It's truly a vinyasa, a breath center practice. Feel yourself falling to one side. There's almost a fall there, like a give up, but then feel the strength of the muscles lift you back up on the inhale. And exhale. A graceful fall with gravity. Check to see you're still breathing fully into the diaphragm as you're doing this. Next one, come up to center. Let's take our hands to the side, to the center of our heart for a moment. You're going to take your left leg out to the side. Come on to the big toe side of the left foot. Extend that leg. Yeah, you got it. Hug your thighs together. Drop your left hand. Lift that right arm up. And now exhale, hold into the gate pose, <clears throat> reaching to the left side. And what you may find is <clears throat> when you're not moving, your breath might get softer, maybe not as deep. That's all okay. But then there's that level of chronic awareness of when you're still, can you direct your breath into that spaciousness of your right ribs and your side body? Even if we can't physically breathe there, can you see your liver? Breathe into your liver and your right side. Where else do you feel it in your body? So the stillness in my practice allows me to deepen my understanding of the pranic, the life force work that's done with the breath. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, take the hands down. You can step that left leg in, come back onto both knees. We're just going to do the opposite side. To, so take your right leg out to the side, onto the big toe side. And drop the hand. We're going to lift left arm up on inhale. So you're creating length, right? That whole left side is long. And then as you exhale, take that length towards the right. Bring it with. If you feel any discomfort in your shoulder, then plug the arm bone into the shoulder socket just a little bit. So there's a reaching, but there's also that plugging back in. Let your breath smoothly flow through your left side. And you'll notice that it's hard to breathe into your right side because it's compressed, right? But there's lots of space to explore the left side. Breathe into your spleen, your stomach. And then take that arm back down. Or yeah, we can take them up and then down. Step the leg in. All right, we're gonna come up to standing. So we're gonna continue to explore vinyasa through the breath, so true breath center practice. Take a moment. And if you wanna set up your blocks at the top of the mat, if you, we might be using those in a low lunge, so you can set, so put them to the center, Paula. Paula, you're gonna put them to the, yeah, we'll put them to the center, there we go. There you go. Yeah, I know it's, an, it's, a, different, it's a different deal. Okay, so you guys face each other. You're gonna face each other at the top of your mat. There we go. So let's find mountain pose, because that's really important. Kind of like finding your seated pose. Take your mountain pose from, yep, face each other. You can place your right hand on your belly, the left hand on the heart again. So notice how you're breathing. If you didn't change anything, what's moving right now in your mountain pose? Is it your belly? Do you feel your chest cavity rising and falling? Where you're naturally breathing, and then can you go back to that full body breath, that structural breath of base of the spine all the way to the collarbones, or to the back of the throat even, and however you want to empty, top to bottom or bottom to top. Is that there for you?
Let's move the arms to that. So take your arms to your sides, a little bit like the cat cow. As you inhale, all we're gonna do is roll our arm bones outward, palms out, thumbs back, feel the space in your chest. So that's gonna create a back bend. You can lift your face up towards the sun as you exhale, roll your upper arm bones inward, chin towards your chest, that you're squeezing your inner elbows towards one another. Let your head drop. There's the exhalation, right? Inhale, space through the front body. Exhale, space in the back body. But there's still that inhalation levity, lifting. Lifting your heart, lifting your chest. Lifting your head, lift your gaze, exhale, dropping. Head slightly heavy forward, shoulders fall forward. Kind of a feeling of collapsing, right, at the bottom of the exhale. Super simple, but notice how if you're breathing to your belly, it's not gonna be as beneficial. Breathe into your chest and lungs, into your, your thoracic, your chest cavity. Can you really, truly let the breath move you? So, and one of the things I try to do is I'll let my arms hang and start your breath first. Start your engines, right? Your breath is your engine. So breathe and notice how I don't even have to move my arms. I can just breathe and my chest starts to come forward on the inhale and my arms then roll back. Initiate the process from the breath and then I let the breath out and my shoulders naturally collapse forward, right? So initiating from the breath, even if it's a smaller movement. How does that feel? All right, so now let's add on to that. Next time you inhale, feel your chest rise, your arms roll out and take them all the way overhead. So finish, we gotta have that count now so that we can come all the way up and over. And then exhale, drop the arms down, let yourself roll forward again. Let's do that two more times. Inhale. So beginning, middle, your arms are about halfway and your arms are all the way up. So you might have to move a little faster if your breath is shorter. And then beginning, middle, and coming down. Just collapse. One more time. Inhale up. And this time hold at the top of the inhale. We're going to exhale and take our hands to our heart and sit down into chair pose. So take a moment there, just pulsate the legs if you'd like. You can press into your heels, wake up those legs, wake up your feet. Draw your knees back behind your toes. Moving the legs to the breath, very simple. On exhalation, Think of dropping a little bit deeper, like your backs of your thighs are gonna be more parallel to the ground. Drop the thighs towards the ground. As you inhale, press into the heels and lift up as high as you wanna come. You can come all the way to straight legs. Exhale, drop back down. Just the legs, keep the hands at the heart center. Inhale, press into the heels, lift your kneecaps, lift your thigh bones into your hips. So levity through the legs, right? Exhale. Drop back down. Let the breath lift you. Make it more easeful. Muscles are working, but lift up and even the crown of the head lifts. Exhale, slowly drop with gravity. So this is that balance between effort on the inhale, but not too much, float up, and that ease of falling on the exhale. That's chair pose. And in doing this, you'll find that place where in the knee bend, you can hold it comfortably. Next time, find that place and stay there. Hands can stay at the heart center, or if you'd rather take the arms up overhead, that option is there as well. That invites more spaciousness into the ribs, so it's up to you. But also remember, anytime the hands are away from the center of the body, you gotta breathe deeper, it requires more oxygen, it requires deeper breath. Feel how strong your legs are, and even though we're still, still think of, you're still in your body, but you're still inhaling, think of pressing heels and the ball mounts of the feet into the ground to keep those legs strong. 
still exhaling, thinking of just taking your hips back and down. That's what's going to help to keep that strength. Last breath. As you exhale, slide your hands down your thighs. And then you can either come to your blocks if you'd like or to your shins. Starting to feel that back line open up. So here or here, your call. Coming halfway out, reaching into monkey. Just bend one knee and the other. <clears throat> Exhale, come all the way down. Feel free to bend your knees. You're going to take your weight into your left foot. You're going to inhale and lift the right leg and step it to the back. Inhale is a lift and an up, right? And if you want to use blocks, remember your blocks can be here. As you exhale, drop your right knee, but slowly. Think whatever your breath count is. Slowly drop that back right knee. Crunch nice. This first one will take a little movement and let the legs open up. So if you want to use your blocks and go back and forth or hands to the floor. So we're on that back knee. Heather, you might need to bring your front foot a little more forward. So we want the front foot forward enough that when we lunge forward, the heel doesn't, if the heel lifts up off the ground, then that front foot is too far back. All right. So this is going to be our salutation. We're going to do a low lunge salutation. Then take your hands to the ground. <clears throat> take a moment there. And you're going to hug your thighs together. On an inhalation, we drop the knee on the exhalation. On an inhalation, you're going to sweep your arms up overhead. And remember when we were here on both knees, what it felt like to let the breath lift you up. Let's do just that a few times. Exhale. Drop down. Inhale. Float the arms up. And notice I'm coming through the front now. It'll feel, you can try both. Through the sides is more of a lift and side stretch through the front is more of a back bend. You can try both. And if you'd rather land on your blocks when you come down, you can do that. So notice how the, the direction the arms take has a lot to do with what you're opening through your body. Take the next one up and take three breaths. Where is your breath directing itself? Do you need to change that in any way? Would it be more beneficial to breathe more into the ribs if you're belly breathing? Drop your hands back down. You're going to take, for this first one, take the left foot next to the right, slide it back, and take your child's pose. So remember, we said this is a good place to just breathe into your belly. Maybe you're letting your abdomen rest on your thighs or you can have your knees wide arms behind you if you'd like palms facing up the space of rest make that exhalation a little bit longer so this is a, po a position that will allow you to restore to relax a little more deeply feel the earth Focus on the exhalation grounding you. Even notice that very final point at the bottom of the exhalation and just sort of hover in that space. Pause. I call it the peaceful pause at the bottom of the exhalation. Then when you're ready, we're going to inhale and come back up. You can find all fours. Next inhalation, bring your right foot forward. So if you want to use your hands to help, you can. Bring your right foot forward. We just want to get it up there for now. Left foot's to the back, dropping the back left knee. If you want to pull your blocks in to do some ooey gooey movements first, just waking up your hips and your legs, please feel free to. And those don't have to be done to the breath. You're just really working more through the physical body. And then take yourself into your legs. 
You can use your blocks or have hands on the ground. Inhale and take your arms up. And think your arms are floating up, but so is your chest. And let's do that a few times. Exhale. Drop the arms back down to your blocks or to the ground. You can even round your spine like a, a cow pose or cat pose, sorry. Inhale, lift up. And exhale. Drop down, let your breath initiate. You can come through the front or you can try taking your arms out to the sides. You'll feel more of a side stretch, so try both. How does the breath respond to arms coming up through a different pathway? Do you feel yourself breathing differently? So it's your explanation, exploration between what your body does and how your breath responds. But then the other thing is to take the control of letting your breath literally lift you up and let your breath release you down. Take the next one up and find your hold. So we have to create some stability through the legs. So hugging that left thigh bone forward, right thigh back or right calf back. Nice. Body still, where do you go with your breath? And then slowly take your hands down to the floor, use your blocks, roll your back left toe under. And as you exhale, step forward and bow into your fold. Feel free to use blocks or hands to the ground. That's up to you. Take your hands to your shins or your blocks. Come halfway out on inhalation into the monkey pose. Exhaling back into your fold. Press into your heels. Think levity as you inhale, not just the legs, but the whole upper body. Lift everything upwards on your inhalation. Even the arms. The arms are the very top high mountain pose. Exhale, slowly slide the hands down to the heart. All right. So that's the salutation we're going to do, and we're going to do it really slow. And I encourage you guys to, to do your best to let your breath start the movement. So just like we're, when we're here, if I start moving my arms and then start my breath versus start my breath and then let my arms move, right? Just give it a go. So finding yourself in mountain pose. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Pause there at the top for a few breaths. Notice how you're breathing. Next exhalation, bend the knees, sit down into your chair pose. Hands can stay where they are. You're welcome to, take them to, welcome to take them to the heart center. Even though we're still, think inhalation, press into the heels, lift the leg line, exhalation, sit. So it's that combination. Next breath out, slide your hands down your thighs, come into your forward fold, hands to your shins, to your blocks. Hands to your shins or blocks, inhale halfway out into your monkey. So notice your inhalation will lengthen your spine, reach out, lift the hips up and back. You're gonna exhale, drop back down, get the hands back to the floor, bend your knees softly or to your blocks. Take the weight into the right foot. As you inhale, lift that left leg up, reach it back and step it down. So we're in a high lunge just for a moment. Then as you exhale, slowly drop that left knee down. So it's that slow drop with gravity and control. Hug your thighs together. You can use your blocks or if you want, inhale, sweep your arms up. Float them up with your breath. Make space through the chest. As you exhale, hands come down, slide the right foot next to the left and take your child's pose one more time in this and just let go, relax, breathe into your belly. Maybe you can feel your belly moving on or between your thighs. Soften the shins into the ground. Release the weight of the torso into the thighs. 
the weight of the head into the ground. Take the hands back out in front of you. As you breathe in, come back up to all fours. Take a breath out. Then you're gonna inhale, squeeze that left leg forward, or if you want, use your hand to bring it forward. Take an exhale, feel that back knee grounded, hug your thighs together. So that's the other part is the exhalation is dropping the knee, but it's also hugging to the midline. Squeeze your inner thighs towards one another. Then when you're ready on an inhalation, let the breath lift your torso and your arms up. Take your gaze up. We breathe out, we let the arms fall back down to blocks or the floor, roll your back toe under and step to the front of the mat. Bow in that forward fold for a few breaths. Hands to your shins for monkey pose, inhale halfway. So explode outward, let the thighs bones lift up and back, let the spine get long. Use that inhalation, keep creating space. And as we exhale, just bow, fall. Let go. Press your heels into the floor. Inhale. Think of everything lifting up with the breath. Next, exhale, slide the hands to heart center. Nice. Super slow mo today, right? Super slow mo vinyasa flow, but the big thing is truly doing a breath center practice. So we're gonna do one more round of that. And we're gonna go into down dog if you'd rather instead of child's pose, okay? And that's up to you. So recognize the difference. You know, child's pose allows you to belly breathe. Down dog really is not meant for that. Starting with hands at heart center. Feel yourself through your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Take a few breaths in your high mountain. Next exhalation, think it's that perfect balance point between gravity and levity. Sit down into your chair pose. Hands could be at the heart if you'd rather. So playing with gravity and levity, inhale, you gotta lift your sit bones, lift your thighs, lift your calf muscles. Exhale, sit down. Next exhalation, just slide your hands down your thighs and come all the way down into your fold. And you can decide to hang. You could even do opposite hand to elbow. And here you could maybe do a belly breath. But as we get more structured and stronger through this pose, deeper into the pose, so the more you straighten your legs, then you're lifting the leg line up. And you want to keep that chest breath going. Take your hands to your shins and inhale, come halfway out. Lengthen through your monkey pose. Looking just in front of your nose. Well, exhale, bow back down. Feel your weight going into your left foot. As you inhale, and you can use your blocks, reach that right that foot all the way to the back of the mat. It's almost like you're in a warrior three for a moment. Put it down. Exhale, slowly drop that knee down. Take a moment, hug your thighs on an exhalation. When you're ready on an inhale, sweep your arms up. Let your breath lift your arms, lift your torso. As you breathe out, take your hands back down. You can roll your back toe under if you're coming into a down dog. If not, keep the foot flat and you can take your left leg back into your child's pose again. As you exhale, otherwise roll back toe under, lift your back knee and exhale, step into your down dog. That's your call whichever you need today. It's your first down dog. Be sure to take a little play in. 
But here we come into a whole different relationship with breath because we're upside down. And I like to do crazy things like picture my diaphragm because as you're breathing in, your diaphragm is actually contracting. It's the active phase. It's contracting towards your navel center, towards your pelvic floor. As you breathe out, the diaphragm relaxes and slides towards the rib cage. So that part just got a lot easier when we're upside down. The exhalation is more easeful. The inhalation is a little more work when we're upside down. See if you can sense that. Breathing into your chest cavity. Last breath. You can look slightly forward. You're gonna keep your weight into your left foot. You're gonna inhale, step the right foot forward wherever you can get it to. Exhale, drop that back left knee. Hug your thighs together. When you feel sturdy, inhale, sweep your arms up. Let the inhalation lift you. Sometimes you can even relax your arms and think inhale, lift the chest wall, right? Create a little more space through the chest. Exhale, take the hands down, back toe can roll under, step to the front of the mat into your fold and relax. You can let your head hang or if you're getting more into a, a stronger, more structural fold, you can walk your hands back towards your toes, lift your leg line up, activate the legs more. Hands to your shins, inhale, come halfway. Reach out. Notice where in your torso you feel the breath moving. Is it above or below the diaphragm? You want to try to direct the breath into the chest wall too. Now as you breathe out, exhale. Belly breath can come in, especially if you want to bend the knees and drop the ribs on the thighs. Then press into your heels, inhale. Feel that full breath come through and lift your whole body up. Exhaling hands back to the center of the heart. Nice, just pause there. So the thing I like about doing a breath center practice is that it takes, it takes a lot more concentration, but in doing that, you're, you're already taking care of that wandering mind, right? If you're thinking about, well, am I breathing first or am I moving first? You're in the moment, you're here right now. So we're gonna do that last half round. So it's really mind, part of the mind control game that we play in yoga. As you're ready, just begin your breath in and let your arms float up. Lengthening through the sides of the body. And then next breath out, we're gonna sit down into the chair. So let gravity get a hold of your thighs, taking them back and down, but not too much. The deeper you sit, the more your leg muscles have to work. If you'd rather have hands at the heart, please feel free to. Even in the stillness, sense that as you're inhaling, you're pressing into your heels, you're lifting your leg line. Not physically, you're not gonna move, but think of lifting up, hugging the muscles to the bones. As you exhale, think of sitting down. Then next breath out, slide your hands down your thighs. Take the forward fold. Use your blocks if you'd like. Might be more harmonious for your back line. You can take hands to the blocks or start to get more into a structural fold, lifting your hips up and back, spreading your outer edges of your feet towards the long edge of the mat, creating more stability in the outer hips. Hands to your shins. As you breathe in, start the breath and then notice how your chest, chest like swims forward. The buoyancy of the breath will lift you up and out. And continue that. Use the breath to stabilize your spine, looking just in front of the nose.
Breathe out, slowly drop with gravity. A graceful gravity drop. Weight comes into the right foot. You can be on blocks or hands. Inhale, lift that left leg. There's the levity, lift it and reach it. Exhale, drop it down all the way onto the knee. Pause there for a moment, hug your thighs. When you feel like you've got a stable base of support through your legs, inhale and take your arms up. Super simple. So on the next breath out, you have those choices. You're gonna breathe out and fall, letting your hands come down. You can slide the right foot back into a child's pose, or you can roll the back left toe under, and on your exhalation, lift up into your down dog. Maybe a little bit of both. And if we're struggling to keep our breath up with the movement, then we know the child's pose is definitely a better choice. Anxious breath is a sign that something else is, is anxious too. So keeping that breath stable. If you are in your child's pose, come back into your down dog, or you can just slide that left foot forward. It's gonna be up to you. So from child's pose, remember we're in our knees, and you can inhale, bring that left foot forward and drop. Otherwise, if you're in your down dog, inhale, bring that left foot forward, exhale, drop to the back knee. That's it. Take a moment, pause, hug your thighs. Then initiate from your breath, inhale. Lift up float up. Little effort is possible to make your body long and tall towards the sky. Still feeling that grounding energy through the legs. Next breath out. Take your hands down. Step through to the front of the mat into your fold. Your fold position, so you might have your knees bent and just dangle and be real soft. You could use your blocks or get more into an active fold, lifting your hips up, pressing your thigh bones back. Active fold requires more active breath, softer ragdoll fold. You could even breathe to your belly, but keep those knees bent. And get ready to use your chest breath, hands to your shins. Inhale, come halfway out into your monkey pose. Reach and lengthen. Even the back of your neck is long. Throat is open and spacious. Draw your shoulder blades onto your back. Imagine bringing the bottom tips of your shoulder blades slightly towards your hips, but you're lengthening through your spine. Let those collarbones smile, create space to your chest. Exhale. Let yourself drop into your fold. Press into your heels. Think energy the earth coming all the way up through your body as you inhale. Lifting up. Take all the time you want. That sweetness of the breath lifting you, holding you. And exhale slowly, hands back to heart center. Beautiful. All right. We're gonna come back down. Take your time. Super simple today. And we're gonna come all the way down onto our backs. See how, I just want you to see how you feel. So this I call, I, when I practice like this too, I call it my nervous system practice. Like I'm trying to, you know, it's not that we're not using the muscles, but keep it simple for the nervous system, right? It doesn't need to be complicated. When you bring your legs into your body, if you'd like to do that, you can roll around on your low back a little bit. And let's feel ourselves through our breath again. 
with another super simple pose we do, which is windshield wipers. So taking your feet to the ground, wherever you want your arms. We're gonna do two different styles of windshield wipers and I just want you to kind of feel how the breath can make a difference. So the first one, I want you to widen your feet more to the edges of the mat so your heels are wider than your hips. Knees are bent. We're gonna work with just the left leg first. So feel your whole left thigh bone from the base of the hip to the knee and feel your big toe side of your left foot. And as you inhale, I want you to actively press that foot forward and inward or your thigh bone. So stretch it forward and inward. Remember lengthening on the inhale, right? And then as you exhale, return back to your natural space where you started. So coming back to the flat foot. We're moving just your left leg. Your right knee is gonna stay steady. Inhale, reach that left leg forward. And exhale, come back up. If you wanna add the arm into this, remember when we were sliding our arms up overhead on the inhale. So inhale, slide your left arm up overhead as you reach the left thigh bone towards the front right corner of the mat. Top of the inhale, there's all that space. Exhale, let it go. And inhale again, reach and lengthen. If your head wants to turn, let your head turn. So once again, see if you can initiate from your breath. Start that inhalation and think of the inhalation going down through your thigh bone, creating space through that thigh, your outer hip. Bless you. And then take the next one into that stretch where you just want to hold it. <clears throat> if you like a deeper stretch for the left leg, you're welcome to place, place the uh, outer ankle of the right foot on the left leg. For me, that's only comfortable if I put a block underneath the right knee because my right knee doesn't come down. But you don't have to do that at all either. So I can let that leg fall. I can also let the right leg fall into the left. But if I'm placing my right ankle on my left thigh, then I'm putting a block. Boy, is it sunny here. Putting a block underneath my right thigh. Just pausing there. So... The grace and the practice comes in be able, being able to strengthen the body while calming the mind. Because for most of us, our body needs more movement, but our mind needs more peace and tranquility and silence. So how do we do that in our practice? We do it through the breath. <clears throat> when you're ready, if you've got that right foot on the left, slowly take it off. Bring your left arm back down, bring your left leg up. Just pause there for a moment, or if you wanna hug your knees in again, feel free to do that. So how can we move the body while calming and quieting the mind? By letting the breath do, do the movement for us. And then we'll do that second side. So feet are a little bit wider than the hips, just sensing your right leg line. Feel the top of the thigh bone. As you breathe in, tip onto the big toe side of the foot and reach that right thigh towards the front left corner of the mat like your kneecap is reaching. And exhale, just return to that space of grace where you started. And inhale, reach it inward and forward. So notice that arch to your right waist. And exhale back. If you wanna add the arm to this, as you inhale, slide your arm, right arm up overhead. Left leg, or excuse me, right leg comes forward. Now might be a good time to check back in with your breath ratio. Either keeping it even, equal inhale and exhale, or you can make that exhale a little bit longer and slower because we're coming towards the end of the practice. We're encouraging more relaxation through that longer, slower exhale. You also might feel that pause at the top of the inhale and then that nice, long, slow exhale.
pause at the top of the inhale holds you in that space of levity and length and then you feel it it leaves and then finding the space that you want to hold right leg inward right arm can be overhead wherever your head wants to roll option of placing the left ankle on the right thigh and if you're doing that you can put a block underneath somebody released the hounds So we're still, but you can feel your right side. Your right side's different than your left, and it's encouraging more breath. The spaciousness encourages the breath. If you have the left leg on top of the right, remove it. Slide your right arm down to your side, lift the right leg up. So just for the sake of understanding how we can play with moving with the breath, you can hug your knees in first, or let's take a full body stretch because we've had our knees bent. Final movement, but take a full body stretch first. And then feel yourself reach, reach, reach on the inhale, hug the muscles to the bones, and exhale, sigh out the mouth, let it all go. So the other way of doing windshield wipers, which we usually do in yoga, is place your feet on the floor. And now think, we're gonna let both legs go together. As you breathe out, there's gravity and you're just gonna let your legs fall to one side. But you gotta control that fall so there's a beginning, middle, and end. And then as you inhale, that's the effort to lift the legs back up. Exhale, legs fall to the opposite side. So if you see if you can feel that difference and you know the first version of a windshield wiper we did the inhalation was the active phase of reaching the thigh bone and creating creating a purposeful space through the side now you're just letting gravity take your legs from one side to the other with the effort being the lift not the drop And just do one or two more rounds. And if you find you want to finish on one side or the other, or hold one side, or there's any final movement you need before your relaxation, take that in for yourself. And now comes the, the real moment of intimacy with your breath. Because we're no longer moving, right? Shavasana asks us to be still. It's the bridge between our physical practice, the asana, and the four limbs that make up meditation and yoga. And the breath is that bridge from asana so it goes asana, pranayama, which is the breath, and then there's the four stages of meditation, starting with pratyahara. And pratyahara is what we generally experience in maybe in our physical practice if we're lucky, but definitely in shavasana, which is just sensory withdrawal, bringing all of your senses into your body, the first taste of meditation. And how do we do that? The same way we've been doing it this whole time, by focusing on your breath. The difference being that you can still focus on your breath, but you're no longer controlling your breath. You can just feel your natural, intuitive breath. That's the intimacy, the trust, 
and knowing that your respiratory system, all of the systems of your body know exactly what you need right now to bring you back to that state of harmony, to integrate everything you did in this practice in all, into all of those systems of your body. And your breath will deliver that like a gift to each of those parts of your body. And we trust and we just hold space for ourselves by witnessing the natural breath going in and out. A mantra I often use is I breathe in to hold space for myself, breathing into that awareness of space, offering that loving kindness, and breathing out and just recognizing that whatever it is that I experienced on the inhale is fleeting just like the breath that opportunity to let it go. Breathing in, holding space. And breathing out, releasing. Recognizing that we are always, even in stillness, we are in transition. peaceful, mindful transition. Breathing in, holding space, full awareness of your body your thoughts, your breath, all of your layers of your being. Breathing out with that loving kindness, acceptance. Begin to integrate how you experience yourself from the inside through your breath, the feelings in your body, even your own thoughts to what's outside of you. So with your eyes still closed, imagine where you are right now, the colors, textures, maybe even their smells, feeling of dog fur. <laughs> But 
whatever it is you can imagine around you and start to integrate what's inside of you with what's outside of you. Like if your breath were a camera, you can point that camera inside of you and take a selfie. And then you can turn it back around and take a picture of what's outside of you and you have that ability in your own mind's eye with your own awareness to go from selfie mode to panoramic. Integrating those two in a way that feels good and comfortable for you, whatever it feels like today. And if you want to take a full body stretch or hug your knees in before you come out, you could just roll to one side and pause there. I'm pretty sure they let themselves out and I'm pretty sure they're they think you're here for them so yeah you each get one thank you guys I'll take our hands to our heart center So remember that doing a, a breath practice is not something you have to be on your mat to do. You know, I found myself, in, particularly in the last four months, that I can gauge how I'm feeling through my breath. There's a lot of times where my, my breath is stifled or my breath is very anxious and that tells a lot about my emotions. And I can't always change my emotion, but I can change my breath. And in doing so, that eventually changes the emotional experience of it. So we do have that control. It doesn't have to be involuntary. Loka. Samasta. Suki no. Bhavan too. May all be blessed with peace and joy and love and light. Namaste. Keep experiencing yourself through your breath.